See that? Cool. All right, awesome. Hey everybody, Sean here. So I wanna start on my VVT rebuild tonight. Uh, if you recall, my VVT stopped working. Well, actually that's not true. Well, yeah, it is true, <laughs> kind of. I My original VVT actuator that sits on the intake cam uh, somehow got disassembled and I couldn't put it back together because it was missing pieces. So I found another VVT actuator and stuck it on my motor and it doesn't work and I'm not sure why. I'm not sure it's because of that. I'm not sure if it's because of something else. So what I want to do in this video is start the, um, at least start analyzing the VVT, if not rebuilding it. There are rebuild kits you can get for them, like seals. I didn't get that yet. So the best I can do in this video is just disassemble it. So that's what I'm going to do. For those of you who don't know about the Miata VVT, it's, it's not VTEC. A lot of people confuse it with like Honda VTEC. It's not quite the same thing. It does uh, adjust the intake valves only, and it does it all the time. It's not like kicking in at a certain RPM. It's actually on pretty much all the time and adjusts itself based on engine load, RPM, and maybe some other things. There's actually very little written about it. It's hard to find information about it. There might be some stuff in some old manual somewhere, but from what I can tell in my research and what I know about it, is that it basically is on all the time and it's controlled by this oil control valve here on top of the uh, uh, valve cover and it's fed with oil from the block that comes from this the back of the uh, head up to this housing and it's controlled by the solenoid in this oil control valve and the solenoid turns on and off to control the oil flow that goes into the uh, variable valve timing actuator right here on the intake um, cam. So what I want to do is I'm just going to pull off this. <clears throat> oh wait. First thing you got to do is you got to take the banjo bolt out of the rear of the valve cover. Again, there we go. Back over here. So what you've got here Pull this timing belt away. So this is it right here. I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna move this camera in so you can see it a little better. So this is it here. This is the uh, VVT actuator. So what happens is this thing fills with oil and either uh, advances or retards based on um, these oil reservoirs inside the actuator. And it controls the, uh, the valve timing that way. So, First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the um, assembly off the valve cover and kind of figure out what's going on over there, make sure everything's in order, and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll pull this off. I'll take you guys on a little ride. Going down. Oh, very good. First thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take off this oil feed line so I can get to the, actually what I'll do, I think I'll take the, uh, oil control valve out first. Um, as you can see, it's a, a little solenoid that controls this valve that opens and closes. So that's done. All right, so let me pull this off. So this has a little filter on here. And this is a common area of failure um, because this thing fills up with gunk. But mine looks pretty clear. Looks pretty clean. I don't think, I'll wash, I'll uh, spray that down with something, but I don't think that's the issue. And so this is the oil line. It looks good. I noticed that there's supposed to be a gasket here and I noticed there's no gasket here or it's worn away. There seems to be some kind of rubber in there. But the pictures I've seen online show much more of a gasket here. 
which makes me wonder if um, when I took it apart previously, the gasket fell out or it's just worn away because there is a little bit of gasket there. But the thing is, it, it didn't leak. I mean, it never leaked. So I don't know what's going on. So what I'm looking for is any indication of, you know, leakage that would cause oil pressure to drop, which would prevent it from functioning. But I don't see anything. This all looks good. And I never had any oil on the top of the valve, valve cover, so... I don't think it leaks from there, so I'm thinking this is all pretty good. Um, there's an O-ring on this oil control valve, but that feels pretty good. But I can probably get a replacement for that anyway. Um, I can test this actually. You know what? I think I'm going to test that because I can put if I put a 12 volt on there, I should be able to activate make this do whatever it does. If it's a solenoid, that means it's controlled by voltage and moves back and forth really quick. So let me do that. And so I've got these little leads I've made up from a something and I just use them for this kind of stuff. See there? So that's what it does. So, it works. So I think what's next is to take apart the VVT actuator on the engine. And that is this thing right here, which I've already pre loosened, pre loosened this bolt. This is the actuator. There's a bunch of little bits and pieces inside of this actuator that I don't want to lose. So I'm going to put it in another container. It's going to clean this out a little bit. All right. Cool. So, and like everything else, I'm sure that's a 10. Oh, wait. Is this what I want to do? This little uh, hex bolt has a an O-ring right there, and these feel pretty pretty soft still. So they're probably okay. There is a kit you can buy, a rebuild kit that comes with a bunch of seals for this, but it's like fifty dollars, and quite frankly, you know, I don't know, I don't know if it's necessary. So this is the part that you gotta really be careful when you're taking this thing apart. You wanna make sure that you don't lose anything and you pay attention to how it's assembled, basically. So you take the outside plate off and you see this is the actuator. Okay, yeah, and so it rides on this this piston, so this piston must go down. It fills with oil, presses it down, I guess. Yeah. Goes in like that. Oh yeah, because it locks there. Okay, I get it. Okay. So th this whole thing, it only it only goes in that far, and I guess when it oil pressure forces it out, and then it advances. Okay. All right. I kind of get that. All right. Um, not, I'm not liking how this goes in. It feels a little rough. I wonder if that's a problem. Whoops. Oh, shoot. Okay, let's not lose anything. But I don't know. So that's going in here. Actually, you know what? I want a bag. It is a little baggy. Okay. There we go just to keep things clean. Okay. So I also noticed there's a, looks like there's a rubber seal here. Um, an O-ring, I mean, right here. And there's also an O-ring on this as well. 
So those are probably two things I can try to find and replace. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, this looks like it, I don't know. At least I can try to find something to replace it. I bet these are both the same size. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like they're the same size. Okay, good to know. Now this thing, there's a little, what I've seen called a puck, and that's this little cap that sits here on top of this oil feed. This little tiny thing, apparently this gets lost a lot. So you have to be very careful with this. Now this is where it gets weird. This is in here, uh, there's these little, what they call apex seals. And I guess they call them apex seals because they seal against a, a, um, a circumference. And the thing to remember about these things is that the solid side always goes against the surface it's sealing and the spring goes inside. That's the thing to remember. Um, I'm not gonna take it apart it's actually not necessary to take this apart. Um, there's really no benefit to it. I can see that they're all there. I can see that they're all engaging, and I can, and it's moving. It's moving um, very easily. So the way this works is that would be advanced. This would be retarded. And with oil pressure, it releases the, the that locking pin and. And I guess oil pressure builds up in here and forces it to various degrees of advancement. All right, and well, that's our VVT system. It's got a boring video. <laughs> so I guess what I've got to do, get some seals. I want to get those big O-rings and replace them. I think uh, that would be the thing to do. Actually, I just forgot about something. Over here, this thing here, there's some O-rings on here and I think it comes out and I can replace the O-rings on that thingamabob. Anyway, thanks again for watching everybody. I really, really appreciate it. If you like this video, just hit like. And if you wanna watch some more videos, hit subscribe and you'll be notified when I do some more videos. And as always, thanks a lot guys. I really appreciate you checking out my videos. There's plenty more to come. Thanks, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.